Hello, and welcome to my video about how I got started with electronics. You always wanted to do something good, right? You always wanted to do something cool, something crazy. Maybe you just wanted to impress people. Maybe you just want to make cool stuff. Electronics is a great hobby. However, it's not for everybody, and you're going to learn that really fast. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, I could just get one of these Arduino uh, chipsets and I could just you know copy and paste some code and plug in some stuff here plug in some sensors there and really I can I can make anything I'll be Tony Stark tomorrow well there's plenty of people with four-year degrees master's degrees PhDs and years of experience actually doing electronics as a career that would love to prove you wrong the problem is most people don't know how to get started most people don't know what they're doing. Most people don't have any direction. That's the number one advice I'd give to you if you're starting out with electronics, with Arduino, with Raspberry Pi, with anything. Have a vision. Think of why you wanted to start. What was it that made you, uh, what was the thing that really inspired you to get started or something like that? For me, years ago, it was watching the old Star Wars. I did not end up studying electronics. I didn't study any of that. In fact, I took a water coloring class, and that was one of the best classes I ever took. Uh, I also took a sculpting class, and that didn't turn out too well, but I don't know. Pottery's pretty tough. So, what I did, I always, it was years ago uh, when YouTube was kind of just starting. I think it was around like 2006. 2000, no. Let's see, YouTube started around like 2006. I think I got started. There was a spark in me in ar around 2009, 2010. I think it was 2009 ish, maybe 10 ish. And I wanted to mod things. I wanted to mod electronics. Well, we had Radio Shack at the time, which was dying, the, the, the company itself. It was collapsing, and that was the only place you could go, and I would find videos on YouTube, uh, like maker videos, and there was a guy that was making a lot of, you know, look at this, I made a flame-throwing pen or whatever, I think it was Kip K, and at the time, you know, YouTube was really simple. It was It was content, and people enjoyed it. Um, I think he was partnered with Make. I'm not sure. I think he was. And that's what we watched. And I would watch that stuff, but there was no overall theme to it. It was just loose. It wasn't connected. Um, everything, Every project was different, and it just lacked meaning, so I stopped watching those. And I was just unimpressed with what I saw. It was just a bunch of, you know, backyard hacks and things like that. This is the first important concept of this hobby. Repetition. 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 In other words, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes good enough. And that's what you're going for in this hobby is good enough. You don't have to make it perfect. You don't have to make the cleanest. You don't have to make the best code. All you have to do is make it do something. And then you can move on. You can do something else. You can come back to it. You can perfect it. You're, you can, I don't want to use that term. But uh, <laughs> you can make it better. You can make it more interesting. So uh, fast forward a few years after that. And that spark came back to me again. I really wanted to make something. And I had this vision in my head of a... Uh, an automatic dryboard eraser. And I thought, man, I really want to like make something. I had been studying some uh some science, um, like non conventional science. Um at that time on YouTube, electricity alternate theor alternative theories with electricity were super hot. And um yeah, I spent a lot of my free time studying those concepts and I think those concepts really prepared me and opened my mind. Um uh, to be able to think creatively again. I think that's what it was, and it was fantastic. So 
what I did was I went online, I tried to find out um, something that would propel me in my, you know, my endeavor to make this vision real. The first thing I did was I went on to YouTube and Google and typed up how to start electronics. And there's a bunch of blogs, you know, at the time, blogs were still kind of, eh, they're medium hot, kind of dying out. This was like uh, 20, 20, 2013, 2014, 15. Wow, it's 2019. It's been a while. Um, I think it was 2015, 2014, or maybe 13 even. So, yeah, I looked a lot, and I watched a few videos, and um, I came across the main boards that were popular, Arduino. I remember there was some guy years ago making videos, and he'd call it Arduino, and Arduino this, and Arduino that, and I was just turned off of the way he, his videos were. There. His videos were really annoying. Uh, his quality was pretty good, but I just didn't like hearing his voice. I ended up ordering a basic Arduino kit, and it came with a few components. And I'm going to show you my recommendations uh, of a basic kit that you would need to get started with any electronics. Um, first would be the type of chip. You can go with PIC, sorry, the PIC controllers. Very, 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 very well documented. Very, very good uh, engineers. Uh, many college students have um, done many projects with those as well as many professionals. It was the standard for many, many years. And um, I don't know everything about, you know, all the history, but that's what I what I know. And uh, there's also, there's a, I think a video graphic one. And uh, some students, they, they use those as well. And they do, uh, they make little games, simple things, and like Pong. And those are great too, but they're very outdated. The cool thing about those is you can program them in the field, I believe. Field Programmable Gate Array, FPGA. Um, yeah, those are cool. Um, the more modern ones are definitely going to be the Arduinos. Um, these use Atmel chips, um, more specifically AVR chips. And... Uh, there are different kinds. These are, so the, basically the computer is here. This is the computer, this chip right here. Um, another form of this chip you can see is this. This is actually a fake one. It has a 2 on it because I, I had bought some fake ones on eBay. I do not recommend that. So um, this is the actual computer and it does 8-bit um, processing. And that is very powerful for um, simple little machines. And this is a great way to get started uh, with um, electronics. It's very complicated. Um, it's a miracle what they've done <laughs> to cram so many tiny little transistors uh, inside of this little chip. And um, yeah, it's very powerful. It's very old style technology, but it is a great start. More on that in a minute. Um, this will get you everything started with uh, moving a robot. You can also go with the Raspberry Pi route. I haven't bought one yet because they're too expensive, and I feel like I haven't um, really mastered this one enough yet. Um, maybe in a couple months. I feel like I really need to dedicate myself to um, the what I know, the AVR chip. That's uh, advice number two. Stick with what you know and uh, know it well. Know it thoroughly. Uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, so this board is the Arduino Uno, very popular. It has the uh, 328P uh, chip on it, and that's just going to do 8-bit processing. And you can see, you know, it looks real. It says Made in Italy on the back. I have no idea. I think they had a different color scheme come out after this. I don't know how to check if it's real. I bought it here uh, locally in Korea on a online shopping site and they sent me a few doodads so this has USB input output um, this is the most <laughs> convenient way to start you could just plug it into your computer's USB you can use the Arduino uh, 
programming software. You can program it in any language you want, actually. You don't have to use the Arduino Uno language, or the Arduino, sorry, the Arduino language. I hated the Arduino language. When I first got this, I couldn't understand what was happening. It was all too simplified, and the way my brain works, I'm not the, I'm not the smartest, you know, kid in the class, but I just... I really do a lot better if I understand exactly what's going on. If I can't understand what's happening under the hood, I just kind of lose interest. It's as simple as that. Um, so, that's why I'm terrible at finance. <laughs> so there's different forms of this chip. Uh, you can see, here's the uh, kind of like the microprocessor kind of version. Looks like a microprocessor. This is the... Um, just another board, very similar, but this is more bare bones. You can see here's the USB port, but it's a, a mini USB, like the you know micro USB. Um, I think that's the old USB. Yeah, it's got that funky shape to it. Um, so you can you have these. These are the output pins and input pins. Uh, you'll learn all about these. They can do digital input, digital output pulse width modulation. Um, there's certain pins that are dedicated to pulse width modulation. What that does is um, you set a frequency and then you can set um, how long that pin is turned on. And it's it's very musical. It's kind of like if you had, you know, if you had a drum beat like that, 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 that's your frequency. And then every time you have that, 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 you're, you're hitting a hi-hat at the same time. Or you're playing a guitar note, you know. And it's like, that, 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 that. And then you have a note associated or you have, you know, a hi-hat, something like that. And uh, that's how you can think about it. Anyway, it's very useful with motors, getting motors to slowly speed up and slowly speed down. It's good for LEDs to make them glow. Um, really cool stuff with pulse mo uh, with modulation, and you can even simulate AM radio, which is phenomenal. Um, I've tried it. Um, I got it to work a little bit. So yeah, the the boards are all pretty much similar. Um, obviously, there's other chips, like the Atmega chips. Um, like uh, there's bigger boards that have uh, bigger chips basically and they can do you know 32 bits 16 bits 32 bits they can crunch more data that's what it is um, I don't recommend going that route you don't need to do that uh, you don't need to waste money you can get it if you want but this is pretty much the 8-bit processors are pretty much all you need um, also these take analog input um, which is where um, things like potentiometers come into play, where you can vary voltage to um, vary uh, how bright a light gets or how dim it is uh, manually by the twist of this. Um, this is just a voltage divider. Um, you can learn about that later. So these are this is basically all you need to get started. I mean, it could be something as small as this. This is actually very beautiful that you can have so much potential and power and you can do so many projects with just this tiny little thing. Sometimes they come without the pen soldered. These are soldered onto the board and then um, people who know what they're doing they can just solder wires directly onto these pads instead of getting these pins. These pins are convenient so that you can uh, connect um, some wires onto them and pull them off when you're prototyping. Um, and uh, some people they just they use this for a final product even though They'll just slap it on and connect everything together, and that's that. So you have many, many options. Keep that in mind. You have many options. So um, let's talk more about lighting. <laughs> okay, so let's talk more about what you need in your basic kit. I recommend any number of LEDs. Now, let me tell you the difference between these LEDs. Pretty, huh? These are 3-volt LEDs. Any any voltage higher than 
And three volts is going to make these burn out in a fraction of a second. I've done it many times, and it sucks, but they're very cheap, so no hard feelings. Um, you can get these anywhere. I got them off of eBay for like a buck. So um, the other thing is the, the standard LED. Uh, these are... These can take up to, I think, uh, a few volts, uh, like 5 volts, maybe 9. I heard some can take 12, or maybe these ones can take 12 if you have a proper resistor. And that's the next set of uh, components that you need. You need uh, resistors in your kit. Um, these are the hardest to learn what they, what their values are. They're very hard to keep track of, so I su suggest when you get them, they'll come in like a band, like this. Unfortunately, this got all bent up. These are, I think, carbon carbon film resistors. They're more compact. Um, I believe they're less accurate. If you're an engineer, don't shoot me. Uh, I recently bought these on accident, but I was actually happy that I got them. These are the metal, I think, metal oxide? I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Uh, these are the metal uh, resistors. I hear these are more accurate. Um, they're thicker. Uh, they can have the same values as these. Their value is based, or their the the color bands are associated with uh, different resistor values. Basically, just all you're doing in this hobby in in electronics is you are taking voltage in. The voltage is going to come in through this USB, your computer, or through this separate power here. I always just keep it on connected to the computer so I can, you know, upload a new program and have it powered. It's it's much easier that way. So, all you're doing, all we're doing in electronics, on the most basic level, is you're taking electricity flowing in and you're delegating it to these pins. Okay, these pins are basically mirrored over here and over here. Okay, um, that's all you're doing. You're managing current flow, and you can do a lot of great things. You know, the zero is current off, the one is current on. That's what your computer logic is. It's off and on, but you can. Uh, create patterns and you can create uh, ways to recognize those patterns and interpret those patterns and you can do some powerful things. Look at the whole world around you. That's that's what this is. So this is kind of a very basic form of what made the modern world. Speaking of which, the transistor. The beloved transistor. You're going to need, I'd say a few of these. These are very cheap. Um, they have PNP transistors and NPN resistors. Um, your kit is likely going to have NPN resistors. That's pretty much what most people use. Um, basically, so a, a resistor basically is like a hose with junk stuck in the middle of it. Okay, so the water has to go through the hose. You can think of it, it's think of like a rifle barrel. And in that rifle barrel, there are bumps or obstacles, or or the rifling. It, it's a solid barrel, and the rifling is cut through the barrel, and barely lets the bullet pass through. That's what you can think of a resistor as. Okay, so it's like squeezing the hose. So the electricity that goes through is squeezed. Um, so the. Uh, um, it doesn't go through with full speed and full force, so um, that helps to protect things like LEDs from burning out. Um, I think it's uh, don't put my feet to the fire, but current is what is deadly, not voltage. And I believe the the resistors they slow down current. Uh, the next, so this piece, the transistor, is arguably the most important thing that we have discovered in uh, 
terms of advancing the modern world. So you, you're going to want to need to study this. This actually took me a little bit to study. Like I said, I'm not the smartest kid in the class. Um, it takes me a while to learn things. Um, this is one that you want to spend time learning because it's very powerful and pretty much the basis of what all this is about. Um, basic operation, current goes in. Um, you have a you have a supply voltage going in. You have a uh, you have like a ground, right? Just think of in and out, a door in, door out. Okay. So you have voltage coming in, voltage going out. It's just the path, right? Red and black. And then you have a gate. And when you apply a negative or positive voltage, depending on which transistor you have, when you apply a little bit of current to that gate, it opens the door and lets more current flow through. Um, this is extremely useful, and I will hopefully cover that in a further and in further detail in a, a later vid. Uh, there's a lot of people who see this a lot better, but this is just what I wanted to do. So I want to give you it from a beginner's perspective. That's what this is. I just want to give a beginner's perspective. Um, I, I want to kind of take you all on a journey and show you what I'm creating finally. It's, t it's taken me like three years just to get to this point and most people learn faster but you know you got life you got tons of stuff to do um, you got other things you want to do um, anyway so other things you're gonna need you're going to need um, you're gonna need a breadboard okay this is basic breadboard um, what this is, is it's a bunch of, okay, so these, so you have these rails, there's, you see the blue and the red, and it's repeated on this side, so there are metal strips going all the way down, okay, there's two separate metal strips going all the way down, so you can plug in your ground to the blue and the uh, positive voltage to the red and that powers the whole rail okay um, and then these I these holes in the middle they are connected horizontally this way it looks vertical to you but usually we you know we look at the breadboard like this so these holes are connected uh, horizontally and so anything that you connect on that on th this row it's all going to be shared so if you put voltage on this row it's anything that you plug in on that you know any of these squares in the same row they're going to be uh, sharing that voltage um, and output goes the same way um, breadboards are very useful um, as you can see I no longer use the Arduino and that's what really took the training wheels off and really got me um, trying to understand and, and help me to learn a whole lot more. Uh, so you can see I have a few components. I have a transistor, I have a capacitor, and I have a motor, uh, which <laughs> I feel like I wasn't allowed to learn how to spin this motor until I learned transistor properly. And I was not letting myself learn transistor properly. And I, I don't know. this hobby is so interesting. It has a way of weeding out the weak and teaching you um, it really like teaches you work ethic and progression in, in a way that most other hobbies or jobs or whatever uh, can't do. So it definitely takes consistent dedication and you will want to give up you will want to throw it I've thrown this thing across the room more times than I can count uh, <laughs> uh, it's hey it still holds up still works um, I'll probably put it in the 3d printer uh, uh, hopefully soon or a CNC actually that's what I want to make I want to make a CNC not a 3d printer um, so yeah you can see and I got a joystick connected here 
that's another thing I recommend getting. Uh, these are very easy to program for um, when you understand the basics. Um, I hope to teach you guys some of the basics that I've learned. And that's really what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go really slow and uh, really try to get you guys to understand. Because the whole reason I'm doing this is I believe that in order to survive in the global economy in the very, very near future, everybody's going to be need to be familiar with either hardware, software, or the overall marketplace. I have very strong feelings about that. I think anybody who is not learning how to do that, they should be financially secure because it's going to be very, very difficult to compete in the job marketplace or to really understand what's happening in the world around us if we can't understand <coughs> if we can't understand what's going on in terms of uh, um, software technology on the internet uh, you know smartphones as well all that stuff it's very very important that I think uh, we make that shift right now so don't get left behind is what I'm saying Okay, other components that I recommend, obviously these kind of DuPont wiring, these DuPont wires that you could just uh, pop in and pop out of a, a breadboard. Um, there's male-to-male -male ends where they have pins on both sides. Uh, there's female-to-male, and there's female-to-female. -female. Um, just uh, an example I got here. So here's male-to-male. -male. See how they both ha they have... They come in all, you know, they have long ones and short ones. Um, do I have... Okay, so an example of the female end is obviously this. Okay? And there's different combinations, and I suggest getting kind of all of the above. They're very cheap. And, uh, yeah, just get, get some of all of them. Okay. So, the next thing I recommend, obviously a motor... You definitely want a, a, a few motors. They're fairly cheap. You can use some from old toys. Just make sure that the soldering pads are intact. Um, I had one that I was playing with previously. Actually, I didn't really get it to work with the chip or the transistor, and it just popped off. So I, I bought a bunch of them online, and um, well, I'll, I'll get more into motors later. Um, I think that's kind of a tougher topic, but... Uh, Another thing you might want are buttons. This is a, a cheap arcade button with uh, this kind of, uh, it's kind of like a stop button. Basically, this is the actual thing. The electricity goes in and out, and then, uh, yeah, there's a, a gate in there. Yeah. So when you push it down, there's either a drop in the voltage or the voltage is directed to... Uh, one of these pins and then it goes to the microcontroller and then it says hey the button was pressed so it can work either way so really the buttons here but this is just an extension these are cool um, you can get them on uh, I got them on eBay um, what else I recommend uh, pinner or pin hitters hitter pins <laughs> these are uh, these are basically what's soldered on to here. That's what that is. So this chip can exist, you know, by itself, uh, but somebody soldered them on. Um, let's see, what do I recommend after that? Um, I recommend a few gears. Um, gears are kind of more of a, a mechanical... Uh, thing that they're a little bit more advanced they're simple but they're a little bit it gets complicated because um, then you're really just making a structure you're making you're doing more engineering like mechanical engineering on a very basic level than um, actual um, programming at that point um, so I recommend that uh, if you kind of understand gears they're not too difficult um, what else do I recommend battery packs you definitely need to get some sort of battery packs um, that come with these leads. 
Um, I put some solder on them because they were way too thin and I couldn't snap them into my breadboard. So I just thickened, thickened them up with some solder. Um, you can also have a 9 volt. Um, this is great because once you take out the power, you can, well, once you disconnect it from your computer, um, you can power it manually. And it's really cool to have, you know, just a bit breadboard powered with the batteries and your, your, your project is working. That's a really good feeling. It feels really cool. Another thing you're going to need are capacitors. Um, any kit, any respectable kit is going to have capacitors. Um, generally, you don't need to have giant ones. You do need to have a few small ones. Um, you can see this brown one right here. You can see right there. It's really hard to get this to focus. And there's different ratings on capacitors. Uh, this is a 104. Um, I'll explain capacitors in a different video. Basically, you can think of them as uh, water tanks that fill up and then and then they empty when they're properly full. And that ensures that uh, the electricity that is flowing to the chip or to the sensors or, or whatever you have is being supplied with a constant supply of electricity um, and there are no dips in it and that helps to eliminate um, background noise so to speak uh, and prevent power outage problems. Another thing you are going to need is a servo. Servos, right? You just get the cheapest one. These are like a buck. This is the Tower Pro Micro Servo 9G. It's they're 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 all right. Um, they're very good for just getting concept down. Later on, you're going to want to get some brushless servos that don't make noise. These are very noisy, and they're jittery. Uh, it also depends on your code, but they're they're great to get started. Um, let's see, what else? Are, oh, here's another basic form of button. You're going to see these kinds of buttons. This is just a cap that uh, you can see is on top of a button. See clicky clicky. Uh, most kits will have this included and you can see you can just pull that off. See? It's a button. Pretty easy. Electricity in, electricity out. When you push it, the microcontroller detects uh, if the electricity drops or goes through. It, it depends on how you set it up. You have a lot of options. Um, another thing I recommend um, later, hmm, should I recommend this? Um, let me let me talk about this first. Yeah, you're going to want a potentiometer. You can see I soldered um, three wires onto this one. I did this a very long time ago with a really really terrible, like five dollar soldering iron. You know, from the from the store. It was absolutely horrible. It took forever to heat up. The one thing about cheap soldering irons is you need a hot one and you need one that you can control the um, the temperature on because if it's not hot enough you're not going to get good enough solder um, joints and it's a miracle this th look at that it's just gobbled onto there it's horrible but what this does is this uh, varies the voltage c coming so you have you know voltage in voltage out and then you have uh, a, one of the wires uh, which is the product of you spinning this. This determines how much is actually sent out uh, of the potentiometer um, to whatever you're controlling. It could be a, an LED, it could be a set of LEDs, it could be to a microcontroller that controls LEDs so that you can you know control the speed at which they're flickering or or glowing um, etc etc very cool um, you can control volume that's what a volume knob is generally um, nowadays you know we use buttons or on smartphones we slide you know but that's what it is uh, this is great this is great uh, to have 
you'll learn a lot and you'll be able to do some really cool things to to spice up your projects. Put a nice little twist. <laughs> uh, another thing I recommend if you sort of know what you're doing. Um, or if you feel comfortable is one of these. Uh, seven segment LED display. Most kits will have something like this. It, these are kind of a pain. They're all right. Uh, they're okay. Basically, each of these segments is controlled by a different pen. Oh, imagine that, right? So electricity coming in on uh, each thing can determine which segment gets uh, lit up, including this little dot. I do not recommend getting a multi-digit display. Those can get very complicated very quickly. Uh, I know from experience. I had a terrible time with one. Uh, and you also ha can set up code to uh, display whole numbers instead of you having to turn on you know individual pins. You can do that and make a library or, or a, you know a header file. And uh, yeah, more on that later. But yeah, these are good to have. Um, I think everybody wants to be able to make some sort of countdown program, or you know, you can count button presses. You know, you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you know, back to zero. One, two, three, just for fun. Start out slow. Don't go too fast. Um, what else do I recommend? Uh, oh, yeah. You might want to get some of this perf board if you want to go the soldering route. So like I said, when I decided to take off the training wheels and use the chips themselves, um, because most of this stuff you don't need, to be honest. This just has everything conveniently on here for you. It has a reset button. It, it, all of these are basically all of these. That's that's all it is. <laughs> um, it looks overly complicated, and I, that's why I couldn't get it at first. So, if you want to go the route that I went and get these, you need to go to the microchip website. Uh, I believe they bought Atmel. Go to the microchip website, and they will. You can cheaply buy them for about a buck twenty-five each, I believe. You can cheaply buy them, and they will come to your house pretty quickly, and they come in these sleeves. And it'll come in a pink bag, and it'll have uh, an official uh, document inside of it stating that it is real. Um, this is the best way to order the chips, and you can support the real manufacturer. Do not buy them on eBay. I cannot stress this enough. I bought them on eBay. They were fake chips. They were bricked. I think they're bricked. I think they're just trash. So somebody threw them away. Uh, they could be clocked at a frequency. I I want to connect uh, crystals to them later. These, which you do not need. Um, that's basically what this is right here. Um, it allows this chip to operate at a higher frequency. Um, but if you don't have a clock a crystal oscillator um, and these are we're operating with a crystal oscillator if you try to use these bare bones um, you're not going to be able to communicate with them you're not going to be able to program them you're going to need a crystal oscillator so I'm not throwing away white yet but I noticed that the the markings on these ones are much much clearer I know you can't see that. I'm sorry. I'm kind of far away from my computer. I can't focus it. But the lettering is much, much clearer on the real official products, on the real chips. Always, always buy real chips. They're cheap. They come quickly to your house. I think I didn't pay anything for shipping. It was like hardly anything. Uh, and then, yeah, it's great. So yeah, microchip website. I had to sign up. Um, I think it took a couple minutes, but it was well worth it. Uh, 
as soon as I got my real chips, uh, I put them in here. Um, I made sure my code was set up for for um, they come they come at clocked at an eighth of the speed to use the lowest power possible. They're very low consumption chips from the factory, but you can change that later. You can you can set their fuse bits or you can um you can do it in the programming in the actual code uh but anyway more on that later getting ahead of myself so these are pretty much the basic items i recommend as far as tools for getting your projects going like i said uh you can choose to get soldering boards these perf boards another thing that took me a while was learning the terms of these components so there's a perf board. You can see the soldering pads on the back. And you can see how useful they are to practice. This is just a practice board. So I just took these pin pin headers. These are very cheap. Just buy a bunch of them. And these, these wafers are cheap too. They're very cheap. And it's kind of fun to practice. Look, I didn't, I didn't do too bad. I know it doesn't focus well. But uh, let's see if I can get see. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's pretty clean. That's pretty clean for a beginner. I know it's not showing up well, but it looks all gobbled together. Oh, oh, you see? You see that? Look at those. Look at those. Anyway, that definitely uh, upped my game just by doing one of these. It was a great experience. Uh, you can also get the double-sided ones, but you don't need to. Um, yeah, there's just too many options for a beginner. You can get these, uh, shrink tubing, heat shrink tube tubing. Basically, you can put that on a wire, um, so where your wire is soldered. Um, so if you had two wires soldered together, you could put one of these, uh, sleeves on here and then uh, you can solder the two wires together you pull the sleeve down and then you heat it up with a lighter or with a, a, a heat gun or a hair dryer and it shrinks and it, it covers it up it's kinda like a band-aid but they're very useful if you decide to go to the soldering route um, you're gonna need some tape electrical tape obviously um, you're gonna need you know, screwdriver set. If you go the route that I did, you're definitely going to need um, a soldering, a soldering uh, station. You have a few options with soldering stations. This is a fake Hako. It's a Japanese brand. I don't know how to say it. I don't care. I live in Asia, and I don't care if I say this the wrong way. Uh, this is fake. Um, <laughs> I did a take apart as soon as I got it. I bought it off of eBay, and I actually bet that it was fake. And I got my money back, because I proved it was fake. And look at this. It's sh this the case shakes. Anyway, this is about as fake as you can get. Uh, if you open it up, <laughs> there's actually <laughs> one of these chips inside. There's an Atmel, there's a, an Atmel chip inside, and the board is all wrong. It's like a green board. It's it's not real, but it still works. So basically, what you want, you can get, you know, in America they have Weller. I didn't have Weller here, and Weller was like a hundred dollars for a thirty dollar one. Um, look at this piece of crap. This thing's dangerous. Really, uh, if I had money, I'd, I'd I'd get a real Hako or a, a Will or whatever. Um, yeah, if you live in the states, you can get a really decent one for cheap. Um, yeah, soldering station. If you can get a soldering heat gun, they have like the the heat guns. Those are very useful when you're desoldering, when you're pulling pieces off of boards that that you messed up or that you 
want to take components off of. Basically, this lets you set different temperatures. Um, and you need that. You need that. Desoldering, you need a different temperature. Soldering on different wire gauges and um, to different kinds of boards, you need variable voltage uh, or variable uh, temperature. Um, this thing's a piece of junk, but it still gets the job done. You're going to need some um, you're going to need some solder, obviously. Um, don't get the lead-free kind. It doesn't work as well. Um, you need to make sure you're in a ventilated area. I think there was a girl on YouTube. She's like some kind of electronics prodigy. And I think she has brain she had brain cancer. She's very young. Um, be very careful with these fumes. Lead, mercury, any any just be very careful. Make sure you're in a well ventilated place. Okay? Alright, this one has flux on it, one point eight percent. Just get whatever. Hey, you can figure out later. It's not that expensive. This is a uh, desoldering gun. It's a pump. Basically, you put it onto the, the board. It's very hard to use. And you, you cock it like that. And then you push the button. And it sucks up the solder, or so it's supposed to. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough to use. It's definitely an art form. Okay, so... That's the basics to get you started. Let's talk about things I don't recommend. I don't recommend multi-digit displays. Um, I don't recommend anything like this. It gets very complicated. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend it. It's not worth your time yet. I don't recommend one of these. These are very popular. Uh, this is a uh, like a sonar detector. It, it just uh, you know, look, just look at the pins here voltage, what does that say, trigger, echo, ground, these things are pieces of shit. You'll see these in all kinds of stupid looking robots, um, and people use them because they think it looks cute, like eyes, uh, these things are pieces of shit, they don't work very well, all, What they you'll see them uh, in robots that, you know, they'll go towards something and then they'll, they'll be sending out an inaudible sound that'll echo off of something and then it'll go back to the microcontroller and then it'll stop or it'll turn around. Uh, I don't recommend these. You can get it working with an Arduino library. I don't use Arduino language. I use C and I'll tell you more about that. Um, I really don't like these. There's better things out there than these. These suck. The other thing I really don't recommend is an LCD display. These are one of the most difficult to program components. And I have no idea. I mean, look at all the pins. You use most of these. You're going to be using most of these. I don't know why they're included uh, in kits. They're very terrible. And I had to solder most of this by myself. Look at that terrible solder job. I've redone the solder job like three times. I don't know why. I just can't get it. Maybe I messed it up too much. I don't know. It's 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 a pain in the ass. It sucks. Um, it's very complicated to get this to work. Uh, there's other videos that'll tell you the same. Save this for later when you're when you're good. You don't need display in the beginning. You just need to move something, right? You just need to get some things moving, get get some pieces moving. You don't need to make a menu. You can make a menu without a display. It's not important. All right. I also don't recommend uh, these. I bought these by accident. I have a lot of them. I never use them. They're not too hard to use, but they're a little too advanced for beginners. They are radio uh, transmitter and receivers. Um, very cool, uh, very useful, just you don't need it as a beginner. 
The next thing I recommend is a decent case. You need to put all this stuff into something that you can access anytime and clean up very quickly. Uh, this is one of my favorite things. This is basically an art tray, uh, a collapsible, you know, fishing tackle box type thing. Uh, you can see I put I put my chips and pin headers in here. Actually, that's where. Actually, that's where this goes. Boom, right? And then uh, you can just open it up like that. S see how cool that is? Yeah. So you can see I just store a bunch of random stuff in here. I try to put as much stuff in here. I, I collect a lot of junk. Um, but this is actually not that bad compared to serious electronics enthusiasts. They'll have all kinds of junk. But the the point is, you need to have something that you can organize kind of basically. When I was first starting out, I had a, a box like this. This is okay, but it only gets you so far. And if you want to do a lot of different kinds of projects, even basic ones, you're going to run out of room really quickly. So I recommend just going and getting something like this. It makes cleanup a breeze. You just throw everything, you know, in the right spot. And you can just put it in there and you close it up. Another tool you're going to need is uh, a glue gun. You're going to need this. When you're prototyping, you're going to need a glue gun. It doesn't matter how big or how small the, uh, the glue sticks are. Um, or the gun is. Another thing you're going to need is cardboard, plastic bottles, recyclable stuff. You don't need a 3D printer. I can't stress that enough. Everyone wants to go the 3D printing route. That's not the best way. It's just one of the ways. If you want to get prototyping fast and you want to do it cheap, cardboard, plastic bottles, cut it up, glue it together. It's as simple as that. If you want to go a little bit more cleaner route, foam. Just get stacks of foam. And you can glue them together. Maybe not with a hot glue gun, maybe with something else. Maybe tape, you can tape them together. Anyway, you'll figure it out. I stack these together sometimes, and then you can cut it. You can cut it, and then you can make a basic design, or you can use, you know, styrofoam. See, like this, I just made, you know, a simple little thing. I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to keep the LEDs. But this was just some concept I was using for an arm. I actually attached a, a, a knife to it. <laughs> and I made a little servo cutting tank. Uh, it was cute, but, you know, not practical. Um, oh, one thing you're going to need <laughs> that I didn't talk about is uh, a very simple speaker. These are actually found in your uh, desktop computer. Uh, mine, uh, here's mine right here. I don't like a beep boop on the modern desktops. I like the old sounds. This one was doing bleep bleep, and I just took it out. That's it. I just got to resolder, you know, the ground wire on there. That's pretty much it. So yeah. Um, it's actually very easy to make sound come out of these. Um, I can show you how to do that. Uh, these are very cheap. So your kit should have one of those. Um, this is another LED matrix. These are not bad, but, you know, the projects can get kind of complicated. I don't know if it's worth your, your time as a beginner. So that's pretty much it. Your servos should come with a, a few arms and screws, obviously. If not, it's fine. You can work around that, really. Uh, here's some other stuff. I have voltage, uh, or a I have analog microphone. Um, I have analog microphone detectors, decibel detectors. So you can imagine what you could do with this. Uh, hook it up to some LEDs. You can make a LED mask that you know lights up according to the the loudness of the music. Uh, so yeah, that's basically, I mean, I have a bunch of random stuff in here. Um, don't do what I did. You don't need most of the stuff. You just end up kind of collecting a bunch of random junk. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, 
in terms of components. In terms of books, uh, this is the book that I used. Uh, Learning to Write Software for Hardware by Elliot Will, uh, Williams, Make AVR Programming. Uh, there's a YouTube video where Elliot has an interview with, I think it's O'Reilly, the O'Reilly Company. I don't know if they were doing podcasts back in the day. This book is pretty much what I used. I studied it. Uh, it took me forever to understand the concepts. They are new concepts. Be patient with yourself. Okay? You're learning. You, you may be learning all of this for the first time. Go very, very slow. That is my advice. If I could do it again, I would go slower. And I would understand every single part before I moved on. I would understand every single chapter. Um, you don't have to do that. Maybe you, maybe you learn differently. Uh, but definitely mark it up. Mark, get a good book. Um, I chose this book because he teaches how to program these chips in the C language. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the C language, not the Arduino language, not C++, not C Sharp. I wanted to talk to the chip. I wanted to be able to control the chip. Even no matter how amateur I am, I wanted that. And I knew that would be a fantastic foundation for whatever I choose to do in the future. Uh, even if I choose to do stuff with Python. He, actually, he talks about Python. He shows how to use Python um, and um, stuff like that. Um, oh, one more thing. If you go... If you do go the uh, bare-bones chip route, you're going to need a serial programmer. Uh, this is USB. This is... Uh, serial output you can uh, connect these to the, you connect the transmit and receive lines to the the AVR chip and then you connect this to your computer and uh, you can interface with it so you can type in data from your computer like you know a value that you want to send to the chip and that chip controls how fast the motor is etc you can also uh, uh, get if you if you do bare bones route, you need to get one of these uh, programmers. This one works for me. Um, I got it from SparkFun. I think it was a couple dollars. It was like ten or fifteen dollars. Can't I don't remember, but it's very very attractive. Look at that. It's, uh, there are many programmers. This one it, it just works. It works every single time. I've never had a problem with it. Um, it uses a USB. Uh, what's it called? I think it's the Atmega AT Tiny. Yeah, anyway, uses a very basic um, chip, and you can control the, the voltage being supplied to the chip. You can, this is the same as the uh, USB um, powering this Arduino board. It's pretty much the same idea. Um, I'll show you how to use this later. It's very confusing and difficult for first-time users, and I want to help anybody interested to be able to do that. So, uh, yeah, definitely cuddle up with a good book. Um, take your time and understand that you can make great things, but there are people who have studied and spent thousands of dollars to do it better than you. Uh... But it's not the end of the world. It's okay. Uh, when you're done crying in the corner, uh, just realize that um, it is what you make it. So let's get into it, right? Let's uh, let's 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 learn together. Let's crack it open. Uh, let's do some projects. Um, I just hope to share some tips with you guys. I know this was a very long introduction but this is pretty much three years of my life and free time uh, condensed into one video I hope this is a, a go-to video for anybody who's learning who's wanting to start learning robotics which is you know electronics there's different you know mechatronics it's all the same stuff you're you're, you're controlling and interpreting 
data and sensors and power with you're controlling elect electricity basically to perform perform work and interpret the uh the analog world the physical world so to speak um later on i'll tell you some other stuff that i recommend some other books um just techniques and i'm like out of breath but there's no other way i would have done it i just wanted to do it in one video so uh, I hope this gets you thinking in the least. See you next time.